Today I would like to discuss how can you deal with the pseudo tension limitations um, when you have only a 600 second period you can use. So first is that you need to go to the website of BTV and you can check if you qualify for a thesis license or a researcher's license. Uh, you can apply for those if you are a student, basically, uh, in a university, or if you are a professor or lecturer, or you know you need the uh, you need it for research. But if you are just a student who are interested in uh, modeling and VSIM, fortunately you are stuck with um, these limitations. So first to note that. Um, if you use the student version, it is not for commercial use. So whatever you use it for, you need to make sure that you check the terms and conditions and the, the license details. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to show now is only, of course, if you use it for yourself to to practice. How can you deal with the 600 second? How can you extend the model? How can you uplift your data for, let's say, an hour? So. What we have is a small intersection. So first to note that this method I show, it is mainly applicable for small models like this, where we, it doesn't take a lot of time for vehicles to get into your uh, intersection. Because assuming that you have like a two kilometer long link here, um, it will take like, I don't know, like a few minutes or something for them to get here. Or if your model is very congested, or you have a profile, or you want to model a profile in your demand. So like, you know, in the first 15 minutes, it comes up, then it goes down, then it up, it's down, and you want to model the impact of that. Obviously, you can't do that. But if you want to just model a, a small network where you have like a, a flat profile in your data, you don't change it, or your inputs, you just model an average hour, then I think it's it's, with a grain of salt, it, it, it should be okay. <laughs> so what you need to do is you can go to time intervals first and you can just add the 600 second here. It isn't crucial, but I think it will help you just to put things right, uh, to be sure what's, what you input and, and you will understand it better. Uh, I, I would just recommend to use it like that. So you put that in, you go to your vehicle inputs, you input your volume and you need to make sure that you input it in the vehicle per hour. So this volume here, since you added the time interval, it shows it correctly. So it is 0 to 600. But you need to make sure that it, it is vehicle per hour. So in this case, it means in that vehicle input, I have 60 vehicle per hour. So in 10 minutes, I should have 10. Um, because there are that is like six times to ten minutes period in an hour. Okay, what I do, I go to evaluation, and you see I use node, and I show you two different ways. So you don't need to set up. This is an example that you don't need to set up your time intervals and the two time, because we will automatically take it to the end, and the period will be just one. If you want to cut it to like to every minute your data, what you do is you just put a uh, 60 here. If you do that, Vizim will aggregate data and average data for every single minute in that 10 minute period. So let's just put back to 600. And the vehicle network performance will be again done for the same, it will represent the same 10 minute period like here. Just since your model will run up to 600, it will take it. You can also um, go to simulation and set it to 600. Again, it's not necessary. It's just it's just easier. Um, so you know what you get. Okay, and when you run your model, sorry, I don't want to save it. When you run your model, and I bring up the results, network performance, and node, 
what you can see here is there is a movement for the node evaluation so what it means is this is the first it's free part you can you have three parts here the first part is the node number this is node number one the second part is the from and this is the two so this is from link number 11 at the 171 location so this is link 11 and if i measure the distance this is 171 Because that is the location where the node, the edge of the node crosses that link. And it will record vehicles when they actually complete the trip. So this one will only be recorded when it completes the trip. When it leaves the node, then it will be recorded. So let me just show you where it will appear. So it comes from here, so link 19, so it's 19, so one of these, and it goes to 15, so this is the one. So you should see an increase there, 6, yeah, when it crosses that line. And now if I run it to the end, okay, it is ready. And now, if you look at the data, you see you have 38 vehicles, so two is missing, or two vehicles are missing. Ah, I stopped it. Okay, let me restart it. I wanted to show you in the last moment. So here we are. The last second, um, so we have 38 vehicles. You have two vehicles on the way towards the node, so those two are missing, and there is a third vehicle there, but that has already completed the trip. Sorry, this one is coming in, this one is going out. Okay, so this is the vehicle that has been recorded, and if I come to the vehicle network performance results, here you see there are 37 vehicles arrived, and there are three active. So when you add those, you get the 40. Now, basically you have this data set representing 10 minutes. What you can do, you can just make a, a brave assumption saying that your Q length average and your Q length maximum in meters, they don't change over the hour. They represent an hour in the 10 minutes because you don't change your input. You don't have huge queues. The queue is not growing. Um, in the 10 minutes, you don't see any change in traffic. So you expect that it will be the same for the whole hour. So you can just basically take these as an hourly data. Vehicle delay also hourly data. LOS also hourly data. Because your vehicle delay is, is uh, it wouldn't change. It's just an average. And since you run 10 minutes with average and you assume that the data is average for the whole hour, you can just say, yeah, that's it. Vehicles, however, you need to multiply it by 6 to get the 240, the hourly data. So this is the way you can basically uplift your... Uh, uh, your 10 minute data for one hour just to summary uh, just to summarize so you just need to you still need to input hourly flow here that is key you need to understand that no results represent vehicles that has already completed those trips through the node the queue length and vehicle delay they don't need to be multiplied by six but vehicles need to be multiplied and persons hope this helped please like and subscribe and let me know in the comment section if there is anything thank you for watching